love, sex and relationships. On this week's episode... I have to admit, it's not something I'm proud of. Like, it still haunts me. It's not mm-hmm. something that I've ever been like, oh, like, I'm proud of it. But it was dealing with the whole process of... I know what it's like for you to go through this. So even mentally, it's still affecting me that you're going through this. There were people outside the place with like leaflets, like saying like, save your baby. What happens in your life, God presented to you in the in the way, in that way for a particular reason. So if I was in a situation, I wouldn't be able to bring myself to, irrespective of how old I was, X, Y, and Z, wouldn't be able to bring myself to kind of, to put that to someone to be like, I feel like it's, a, it's a, an idea to not, to not have it because I've like I've had family members I've had friends a lot of people that have had miscarriages or aren't able to have children and it's like I don't the way I look at it is that might have been my only opportunity to have kids hello and welcome to Mavro Talks Love Sex Relationships today we're going to be speaking about abortion but before we get onto that topic let's go around the room we have hi my name is King George hi my name is Stefano Kira E Paris Sophia. Um, so I thought I'd kind of just open the floor up. Who is pro-life here? Okay. Ooh. Who is pro-choice? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What does that mean? Yes. Okay, right. Pro-life <laughs> not means that you are, no. for the most part, against abortion in any form. Pro-choice means my body, do what the hell I want with it. So pro-life is here. Tumbleweed. Pro-choice. Pro-choice. Oh, yes, my body, I want to do what I want. Are yeah. we all pro-choice? Yeah. You? Yeah? I Bear believe husband? so. Okay, right. I'd like the lady to whom I put, or may I have put the situation onto her to be pro-choice. Okay, okay. So, um, next question, and again, only share if you feel comfortable. Has anyone here gone through an abortion before? I have. I have. I uh, had an abortion. It was actually also at a time when I wasn't tracking my periods. Like, now I track mm-hmm. my periods quite a lot. And it's kind of like I, I kind of knew that I was, and I didn't want to believe it so I mm-hmm. kind of and actually I did bleed that's the thing mm. I did have like some bleeding and I kind of thought oh was that a period maybe it was maybe it wasn't but yeah I had to have like a um like a medical abortion where you go under anesthesia mm-hmm. it was like a it was a hard experience but what I would say is like all my family is American and I know that like what it's like there is a lot harder mm-hmm. Oh, uh, you know, not all states it's yeah. as easy accessible. Mm-hmm. So for me, at least the fact that I could go somewhere local, it was kind of as easy as it could be. Um, but there were people outside the mm. place with like leaflets, like saying like "save your baby" and like "don't well, do in, this." In England, assholes, in, yeah. in, go home. In in England, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, there. I had that. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and sorry, was this was this outside a, a sexual health clinic or outside a GP? Outside of Mary clinic. Stokes. Outside of Mary Stokes, which is an abortion clinic in oh, Brixton. Okay. They stand there, like like giving out leaflets. They hold um, little babies yeah. and they ask how how far gone are you? Mm-hmm. Oh, this is how big your baby is right now. Yeah. I mean, is that not classified as harassment? Well, they they're not allowed to do it. They have to stand a certain distance away from the place, but they can still be there as you go in. I mean, I, I've, I've never ha- had an abortion or whatever like that, but I can't even think of having that sort of bullshit. Mm. And sorry, I shouldn't say bullshit because everyone's entitled to their opinion, but that sort of narrative going on as I'm trying to make one bullshit, of the though. most important it, decisions it in is, my life. It is, it is. There's no, I can't, I can't justify people standing outside. Make a Facebook page yeah. and talk your stuff on there. And if people want to hear it, then they can go there, but that's not supportive or, mm-hmm. or, helping anyone in that situation to be standing outside and you don't know what reason people are there yeah, exactly. Exactly. some people might have been there because they wanted to have their baby mm-hmm. and they like have had some exactly. complications for whatever reason they have to do it some people might have been raped some exactly. people it just might be the choice for them so like yeah and even if it is like the right choice for you it's not like you're skipping down yeah. to the abortion <laughs> like, today's yeah. the day like uh, yeah i have to admit it's not something i'm proud of like it still haunts me it's not mm-hmm. something that's i've ever been like oh like i'm proud of it However, I was very young at the time. I was only about 16, 17. I was in a very toxic relationship. I actually didn't want to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have a baby. Mm -hmm. Um, But I was in a very domestic relationship. And if I hadn't have done that, I would have, my life would be so different. So I Mm -hmm. feel like in a way, even though I'm not proud of it, it's the best thing I ever did because it saved my life, Mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. And what about you? Yeah, my um, first abortion, yes, I've had more than one, was um, I've had multiple operations um, due to health issues when I was younger. 
and I was told that I wouldn't be able to have kids um, and I got pregnant when I was in dance school um, and obviously my life was ahead of me and I was like, what? but this can't be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I had to have an abortion and obviously not tell anyone of my pupils mm-hmm. and sit out at the you know mirrors throughout the next however long whilst I was recovering and just watch. Um, I just say, it's like, I always just say, forget abortions think of precautions (laughs) so you don't have to have to be in that position because um it's not always as easy as just going to the clinic and getting it handled yeah um and like i was it's emotional yeah it really took an emotional toll on me it can haunt yeah so you shouldn't be ashamed of though because at the end of the day like i didn't it 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 does happen Mm. And I didn't want to have it's a, some, It's you know, something that some people will have to go through. Exactly. There's a lot of teenage pregnancies and there's yeah. pregnancies at mm-hmm. 40 years old that you didn't know exactly. you mean exactly. to have. Yeah. So uh, it shouldn't be... Touching on um, the whole... I, I, I do understand, especially, obviously, knowing knowing people in my family who may have gone through similar things. Sometimes it's not nice when you do get people like outside the abortion clinics who are telling you not to go through an abortion mm-hmm. because people get PTSD. Some people's your body's baby parts could also still be left in you where the procedure didn't go right. That happens to a friend of mine. Yeah, same. So it's it should be treated very um delicately as well. Like it's not you shouldn't you shouldn't judge someone because they've had an abortion. Does it make them an evil or nasty person? So how you approach them should be thought through. I, I completely agree. Everyone goes through an abortion in a different way. Some some people I know are so blase about yeah. it. They're like, yeah, <laughs> fucked up. I was a stupid bitch and I got an abortion done. And then other people, it is a very, very traumatic experience for people yeah. to go through. Yeah. But I do feel like there should be more um support. support. Like yeah. like you get like even the you get a very little physical support. They don't really tell you what's gonna happen to your body yeah. afterwards. Mm-hmm. I felt like there was no like, support. No support. Yeah. You don't get emotional support. And like nowadays I know like you know how they've got like birth doulas, like mm-hmm. people that support people through birth. There's actually now <laughs> abortion doulas. Uh-huh. So like it's a it's mm-hmm. not that common, but you can like get the support of somebody to help you guide you through your abortion. I think you have to pay, like, you know, which again, it's like, how, how can mm. you make that more accessible? But that should, yeah. be, that should be like available, like physically and emotionally mm-hmm. to, to prepare you and support you afterwards. You've been quite quiet. Yeah. And you seem very deep in contemplation. I mean, obviously you don't mm. have to share, but have do you know someone in your life who has had to go through that? I mean, what are kind of your thoughts like, God forbid your partner ever had to mm. go through that. How how would you kind of how how would you feel about that if your partner? For me, um, obviously, yeah, there's a whole discussion of it needs to be between the both of us. But at the same time, is it is not my body, mm-hmm. and I feel like my partner or whoever it may be has the right to perform that action in the sense of it could have been anything. It could have been the situation is just not appropriate. And it's not something that you desired at the time. And if it's possible to have the abortion, I say absolutely have it. It's just about detaching yourself mentally from the the fact that it's actual life, I guess. Mm-hmm. And just finding a way to just accept that it is maybe for the best. The child could be born and maybe even suffer in life or... Mm you as a human being may suffer or you may bring a child in the world and you may not live to even be with the child. So you just have to judge it by I, I guess. Yeah. And take it as it comes. Um so I just want to ask um you ladies because I, I think a lot of people don't actually know what the process is of having an abortion. I for one really don't know the process at all and I certainly think uh Stefano mm. King probably haven't had experience of the process. Um, would anyone like to kind of share what the process is of getting an abortion? I mean, mine was like 12 years ago, so I don't know if it's the same. Mm-hmm. Um, but mine was very early on. Like, my periods are like cl- clockwork. So mm-hmm. if I miss a period, something's wrong. Mm-hmm. So for me, because I caught it so early on, it was just like a pill kind of. And it wasn't very, like, it's not very pleasant. You have to have a scan. And it's very, like, emotionally, like, draining. But so so when you went into the clinic they you know obviously you told them what you wanted whatever um, and they literally gave you a pill and sent you on their way they didn't 
yeah, they but... gave you a scan. Did they check up it? Like no, or nothing? for me there was absolutely no support, and I actually had a reaction because I was supposed to have an injection because I've got a negative blood type. Okay. So yeah, it was all a bit crazy to be honest. But again, it was twelve years ago, so I'm assuming and I'm hoping that the process now obviously is a bit better for women. But even girls. to go through that mm. so young with virtually, you know, here's a pill, fuck off now. Yeah, is damaging. It was I very. Think. It's not. Mm-hmm. it's not right mm-hmm. luckily I had a very good support system at home so they looked after me but if it wasn't mm-hmm. for that like if I if I came from a home where I wasn't supportive like it, who knows what could have awful. happened to me yeah, yeah absolutely any others like to share about different forms of abortions they've had or um so I've had the oral abortion mm-hmm. where you have to take a pill and then put <laughs> and then put four in and you're supposed to push it up as far to your cervix as possible um and then that basically creates a miscarriage Mm -hmm. so you go home they ask you to wait for like 10 minutes before you leave but no one checks to make sure you do Do they do it for you you no no no, you do it they give you your stuff they scan you whatever give you your pills you go to the toilet you go and do it and they tell you to wait in the waiting area for 10 minutes just to make sure that um it doesn't come out isn't it also to make sure that you don't vomit yeah, that as because well. Because if you yeah. vomit, then you have yeah. to take that one again. Um, and then you go home, and then it's supposed to you're supposed to start the miscarriage like a few hours later. Um, for me, that one didn't work, so it basically for like six weeks I was hemorrhaging, so like explosions of like sacks of blood. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually took a picture. This is so gross, but it, it looked like the baby. Mm. Wow. Um, yeah. It, when it comes out, yeah. like, it does look like it's potentially like. And then there's the I had I've not had the suction one. I think that's what I had. Really? Yeah. yeah that that I've is. I've heard that's not great. I couldn't imagine that. Well, you you're asleep. Oh really? Yeah. Well, I was asleep for that one. Oh no, this yeah. is an awake one. Okay, I was asleep, but that I had that one, but I was asleep. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. yeah that's the, that I've had that. Okay. And you, it's like an operation, yeah. and they. They, they literally everything. remove everything. In a way, I feel like it's, in a way, I felt like that was easier for me in a sense that I didn't have to like go mm-hmm. through the miscarriage yeah. and like passing mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. At least for for the way I experienced it, is I called up um, the abortion clinic and I had to go and get a confirmation of pregnancy with the GP. Yeah. So I had to go mm-hmm. and like they had to confirm I was pregnant in order to refer me. Otherwise, I would have had to pay. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember when I was at the GP. She like tested. She's like, yes, you are pregnant. Um, okay, I just need to sign this thing for you. She's like, but I won't sign it because of my beliefs. Why? What? Why assign why you that a person? Person? Yeah. To I know. The and I was kind of, she was like, I'm just gonna get somebody else to sign it. Um, I won't sign it because of my beliefs. She and didn't I'm, need to say that to yeah, you. Yeah, she could have said, I'm just gonna pop out so and like sensitive. do this. And so it was like I, I look back and at the time I was kind of there just like okay. how can you be a G- what how this can you be assigned to that you role? Feel really ashamed yeah. and you're like oh like I, it's <laughs> you're going to hell so yeah. I'm gonna get what <laughs> yeah literally. <laughs> I remember like you go into like an operating bit. It's kind of mm. when you do feel like you're a bit on a, a carousel wheel of you people literally. coming through. It's just like next, you go in. And like, the you stirrups are already up. Stirrups are up. You put your legs in. Everyone, the guy's there ready. He's like, hi. Yeah. And then, yeah. Done, I think out. that's what girls need to realise yeah. though. Like when they are, like you said about precautions, mm. it's not a, a nice it's experience. Not a experience. And Obviously, you're alone. You're alone. it's there if it, mm. you know, like... Abortion if, if rates have been rising and rising and rising. But it's and not rising. something that people really like want to or should go through. Do you think just with that statistic, why do you think that is? Do you think it's more women not wanting to keep their child, or you think it's more women who are sleeping with men and neglecting to tell the man to use contraception or neglecting ah, to be on ah, contraception themselves? Both. I think it's it's but it's all of that and more. It's also that in this country we have a really terrible like we don't talk to young people about sex. Like, there's such a bad... Mm-hmm. You know, the, I think the UK out of all of Europe has the worst... Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of, like, like, like yeah, yeah, unprotected things. Yeah. 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 And we also consume so much pornography and look at social media, look Tinder, at everything all over the place. This new age, everywhere, sex is... Everywhere. You can get sex mm-hmm. at the tap of a... You know, mm-hmm. a few taps at that. Mm-hmm. So I think everyone's a lot more frivolous. And I'm not saying that's a wrong thing, by the mm-hmm. way, but the protection safe sex mm. and that's also because we live in a school uh, in a in a country where this the school and the church is super linked. oh yeah so when you have church, the school and the schools, church Catholic linked, schools, obviously yeah. there's less re- there's more reluctance to they really educate young people just listening to that fellas how does 
is that experience what you thought an abortion would have been or does it sound worse yeah. or as a, as a male who's also a gay male i'm never really going to ever really experience a girl um carry my child who potentially wants to abort my child but i would like to i would like to think knowing how much i want a child as a gay man i could only imagine it kind of being an upsetting thing for me to go through knowing that my partner's go going to go ahead and abort my child but mm-hmm. at the same time i've seen my friend, she's she's a single mom. She's got two kids, two different baby fathers, which isn't an issue, but she's neither of them helped. And I remember her doing a school run and I was doing a school run with her. She's crying because she just started a new job that she couldn't mm-hmm. get to in mm-hmm. time. So mm-hmm. And just quickly from you, Stefano, what, what are your thoughts from what the girls have said? I feel like our boys should be more educated mm, in yeah. life and to, mm-hmm. to, take to, yeah, to take more responsibility. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you've you've potentially now fucked someone's life up. Absolutely. And there's not all oh, like yeah, just getting abortion is blessed. It's not that like it's they're so going. Much more than that. But I've there's heard so I had a friend who that. was pregnant and she texted the person who it was and he was like, you know what to do. Yeah, and loads and you know, some like, boys the thing as they're well, beating up girls. Yeah. I've heard stories about boys beating up girls yeah. who have gotten pregnant with their babies. But I think also at the same time, it's it's it is sad that you won't the guy who's gotten you pregnant won't be there to hold your hand while you're through the abortion. <laughs> um, I think if you if you've put a girl in that situation, you need to do everything in your power to help her out. Yeah, absolutely. And I I think to be honest, that that's that's fundamentally what it is. You know, if you put if you've put yourself in that situation, or you know, sorry, you've put someone else in that situation, you kind of need to understand mm-hmm. what it's like if the shoe is on the other foot. Um, if you at home do want to get involved with the discussion, um, you know where we are. Mavra talks across all social media platforms, or of course, leave a comment down below. Ooh. One of the things I would definitely say is to not treat abortions as contraception. As yes. Some ladies unfortunately do. Yeah, I know a lot of people who, I mean, I, I don't, but I do know a lot of people who are kind of using it as a mm-hmm. because fail safe. It's free, um, it's accessible, yeah. and they will sort you out real quick in the UK, which is great for when you need an abortion, of course. However, I think that. Um, a lot of the time people kind of forget the other things that come with that. It's, it's a very, you know, well, it's, it's, a, it's a very heavy thing to go through. I mean, at the end of the day, whatever stage of the pregnancy you're in, it is the termination of a life, um, which I think a lot of people perhaps don't want to think about when they're in that, because, you know, obviously it's it's quite scarring. Um, now, if you, if you have an abortion, I don't know what the situation was like for you, but do you think that you should be informing your partner? Because some people are like, it's my choice, so I don't need to involve the man. Other um, people are like... So I unfortunately have had an abortion where I didn't tell the person. Okay. Um, and it was... That posed its own problems. So I think it's very subjective. It depends on the situation. A lot of people... Everyone's a lot more free these days. So mm-hmm. People are having sex with people that they don't see any futures with. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, if you get pregnant, you've got a lot of future with that person. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely subjective to the situation, but I don't think anyone should ever have to feel shame or embarrassment if they do choose Amen. to have an abortion because it is your decision. Completely. And I think um, terminating that life sometimes may be better for that life than bringing it into your current situation. So I think everyone just needs to take a long, hard think about what they're doing um, I agree. before the abortion. I'm not saying- During. Yeah, I'm <laughs> saying before you lay down with that penis, make sure you know what you're doing. What is the process that someone has to go through in order to get an abortion? Like, do you go to your sex clinic? Like, how does that actually work in practice, if you don't mind me asking? So, dependent on the borough that you live in, you can self-refer yourself directly to the clinic. So, okay. whether that's Mari Stopes mm-hmm. or wherever you can go directly to them, dependent on which borough you live in. Um, other cases, you have to go through your GP. Um, and some cases, you can pay for it yourself. If the man wants to pay for it for you, depending on what, what, what your situation is, um, you can do it privately. So I think just in summary, like an abortion is a big thing. No matter like how you look at it, it is the termination of a life. Whatever side of the fence you stand on, you really need to think things through. Have you ever been in a situation where you've got a girl pregnant and that's been a possibility? As far as I know, no. I hope, I hope no one's gone through that. And let's say for example, it did happen. Mm. How would you handle that? Based on your current life, do you know what I mean, situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd have to really deep the situation. I mean, if I can, I think it, w- it would be definitely her decision. 
A hundred. Her decision and it's a thing of, I would need to adjust myself to that decision, whatever she makes. Yeah. Whereas if it's a fling, then it, oh my God. <laughs> I need to find. At that point, I need still... to. I need to find a way to just. Yeah, nah. That, that's that's gonna be it, man. That's gonna be it for me. Because <laughs> I'm I'm a really firm believer of just like having both parents present. You know. Hundred. I understand that people like to co-parent, but also like a family unit. You mm -hmm. know. I feel like that's definitely lacking nowadays. The importance definitely, of that. Definitely. Definitely. Like I haven't particularly been in that situation either, yeah. as far as yeah, I'm yeah, aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, if I was to get somebody pregnant whether or not that was a fling yeah. or in a relationship status i would not feel comfortable in trying to push that narrative push that onto narrative. that person yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and in regards to what you said in terms of the decision i think that's also difficult because obviously it's her body it's so her it's body her decision her choice, yeah. however if you were to end up having this child together you are going to be like you said either a family unit or co-parenting so at yeah. that point this, every decision is still 50-50. So I feel like even the decisions when whether or not to go ahead should also be a discussion. But it's more like 60-40. We yeah. should discuss it yeah, as a yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But really, it's, it's your, you. it's it's your you. decision. <laughs> the best way is communication. Mm -hmm. And really like understand the situation you're in in terms of your lifestyle, if you can afford it, how you how you're gonna live with it, how because that's the rest of your life. Yeah. You know 100%. What I mean, that's that's a whole human being mm -hmm. that you're bringing into existence. And if if you are thinking of actually going through with it and ending the life of a child, then it's like, I mean, it's up to you and it's how you feel, yeah. you know? Um, I think you've got to be prepared for the consequences either way. Yeah. If you have the child, yeah, there's yeah. your whole life worth of consequences. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, if you were to terminate a pregnancy, there's also a lot there's of consequences also, yeah, with that. So I feel like man. what you said is correct, having that communication and both understanding the implications of having it yeah. or not having it is the best way to kind of yeah. formulate a decision. Hi guys, welcome back to Mavro Talks Love, Sex and Relationships. Today we are talking about abortion. On the sofa with me I have... Paris, too. I'm Alex. Samuel. Elise. Bradley. Um, Pro-life versus pro-choice. What is everybody? Pro-choice. Pro-choice as well. I'm pro choice but circumstantial. Yeah. I'm pro choice. Yeah. The choice one. Yeah. They are like, yeah, they are both. Yeah. <laughs> Elise? Definitely the choice one. Pro choice, circumstantial. Has anyone had experiences with a dwarf? Yeah. Jump straight in. Chat to me. Let's just dive in. Naivety. If a female tells you she can't have kids yet, yeah, <laughs> don't fall for that. Still stay like strapped up and everything. But basically, that was the first in incidents of it. In, fa yeah. in fairness to the woman, though, there is like a lot of, you know, there's women with polycystic ovaries and stuff mm. like that where they can't really have kids and stuff like that. But it, it can still it can, happen. And this is why so I said, you weren't like, pulling out. My naivety. I just said, oh, okay, well, you can't have kids. Yeah. Cool, you were it? shooting up the club like, no, Bro, tomorrow, innit? Like, Hitman. <laughs> Let's start, man. Hitman. So it came as a bit of a surprise when it thing. happened. And I guess it was more down to, I think I was 18, 19 at the time. So, and knowing my household, my parents, what I've grown up in, it was like... So you know, did, you, did you both mutually agree to not... Or I, left it to, I left it to her. I think okay. for me it was more if if this is where, if this is the circumstance and the situation we landed ourselves in it. Mm. So I'll I'll take the responsibility. We're gonna struggle. Did you go through that experience with her? Yeah, went with her for the whole process and everything. How was that for you? I want to say stressful, but I think it was it was trying to bear with her dealing with it mm. because it was quite. It was in her first trimester. I think for her it was more of her family religiously wise like going through that as well they were just against it mm. so she didn't really have anyone and then i think she actually had the baby drop out mm. so that was a whole thing as well dealing with like seeing that and mm. it was just like how, wait how how after you have an abortion depending on how far gone you, you are, are yeah. you have to still 
that in. The baby still has to come out. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't advise you about that. So no. it's very, so she's, she's, she's quite knowledge. far gone. Is that what? No, you don't even have to be that far gone, but also a certain amount. Because yeah. it just comes away. It just comes out like a period. It just comes away. It just comes out like blood. I remember someone saying there was like a little baby, like a little kidney. That's right. Yeah. So we it was dealing with that as well. That was obviously psychological. That was a whole experience to deal with. But then, but it was dealing with the whole process of, I know what it's like for you to go through this. So even mentally, it's still affected me that you're mm. going through this. At least in Sam, have you guys had an experience? No. I got my girlfriend pregnant when I was 18. Um, she was on a pill and she claimed to have forgotten to take it for a certain amount of time. She was going through some stress at home. Um, she was pregnant and I remember I was just like, cool, like it's, it's up to you. If you want to have the baby, I'm happy to have a baby. I've I've wanted kids like even mm. from young, even mm. from eighteen. I I always saw it as a blessing. Like I I really got along well with my family, and I feel it's a kind of good environment. Do you have kids now? No, no, I don't. I don't. So I remember just telling her like, do you know what you want to do, and I'll support you regardless. And she was very unsure. I could tell she wanted to have an abortion, but she was studying. Um and she wanted to keep the baby for like moral reasons or whatever her moral compass was, and she ended up having a miscarriage. And I remember her calling me mm. and was like, "Oh, like I had a miscarriage," and I remember taking a deep exhale. Oh, that's a bit of relief. Yeah. Mm. And I remember she was like, "Like you can't say that. That's bad." And I was like, "Oh, but you wanted to get mm. rid of it, mm. but now, like you don't need to go through that." And I remember her saying, "Okay, I can't lie. I do feel relieved, but I feel guilty like doing yeah. that." And, it's just kind of crazy how even something like that, she couldn't even feel comfortable enough to tell me she felt relieved yeah. because of, do you know what I'm saying, how it's viewed? As I said earlier, I kind of sit on that I am pro-choice because I feel like there's so many circumstances that can lead up to somebody yeah. being pregnant. But I know for me, like, especially the way I was brought up, it was, was very much like what happens in your life, God presented to you in the, in the way, in that way for a particular reason. Mm. So if I was in a situation, I wouldn't be able to bring myself to, irrespective of how old I was, X, Y, and Z, wouldn't be able to bring myself to kind of, to put that to someone to be like, I feel like it's a, it's a, an idea to not, to not have it. Because I've like, I've had family members, I've had friends, a lot of people that have had miscarriages or aren't able to have children. And it's like, I don't, the way I look at it is that might have been my only opportunity to have kids. Um, yeah. Like based on how my life is supposed to go, that might have been my only opportunity. And because I, I'm i almost trying to control everything in that type of sense, mm -hmm. I've removed that opportunity for myself. And I'm also like you, want kids, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? What do you feel about kind of the religious aspect? Does anybody else come from that background? No. My mom's religious, but she's like kind of almost modernized a bit. So mm -hmm. she's kind of adapting to the real world. For yeah. me, I'm, I'm not really religious anymore, innit? So I come from a Christian background. Yeah. And being raised again, it was always a thing where, uh, like, similarly, what you said, if something happens in your life, it's happened for a reason. So again, just accepting the responsibilities of you, you mm. took this, and as you see, it's, it's a sin. You sinned, you've done wrong, but out of that, you have to accept the repercussions yeah. of it. And yeah. as you said, it could be your only opportunity. A child is a blessing. Every life has a purpose. And if it's meant to be, it will be, mm. let it be, let things play out as it's yeah. supposed to be. The choice ultimately is going to be my partners. And I would never make them feel bad about, about their it. choice. It's mm -hmm. cool. I just know me as a man would never be telling anyone, irrespective of our relationship dynamic, you need to get rid of that. I do think more about who I'm having sex with and the possibility of you being the mother of my child. That now comes into a huge effect. If yeah, I don't yeah. consider you being the mother of my child and I want to do something with you, that we're talking about. No, that's tough. I can't lie. Exactly. No, bro. If you, <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. I get it. But if you're yeah, having but... sex with a woman that you don't see having that kind of future with and they get pregnant, you got to take the L regardless. It, it like, is responsibility. It's, it's L. No, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that the abortion's okay. I've mm -hmm. heard guys be like, oh, yeah, I've got this girl pregnant. It's ruined my life. And I'm like, right, well, how did that happen? Oh, she said she was on the pill. Yeah, that's dickish And I'm behavior. like, yeah, bro, that's childish behavior. And Put I'm the like, thing on she might have time. said she's on the pill. That's fine, but I'm like, you still had a responsibility to protect yourself, and you mm -hmm. chose not to. You know what I love a woman who says, "I don't care how tight your pull-out game is." Strap up. You'll just but, be surprised how many girls don't want them don't. to wear a fucking condom. Yeah. Like a lot of things, a lot of the time my highness is on other like, guys should have been in the middle of sex, they're like, you yeah. might want to take that, that off. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> sex is better without a condom, of course. 
So, like, so we take the option on to control if we get pregnant or not. So well, it's also our responsibility if we get pregnant. That's what he said. If you think it, it feels better without one, and then you get pregnant, you're both responsible. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah this, and that's and that's all I'm saying is as long as the as long as the responsibility is held on both people, and I feel like we should be all doing as much as we can to to protect ourselves yeah, in general. Definitely. Um, if you guys want to get involved in the conversation, please leave a comment below or follow us and DM us on all the social media platforms at Mavro Talks. Hello, Atlanta. So um, we're talking about the lovely world of clitorises today. Um, well, do you know what any of these I know exactly instruments are? Sick. Clip pump. Yep. It's a clip clamp. Indeed it is. So ha do you own any of the said toys? One of these. It's not like this that it vibrates and it's a lot wider. I'm so sorry. I cheaped out on this one. <laughs> and do you have a clip clamp? Have no, you ever used one? I've never used one. I've never really been into it, but it looks quite interesting. Please well, it's yeah, of course. So, I mean, both of these effectively do the same job. So they're there designed to make blood rush to the clitoris. So obviously, you know, not to get so scientific, if blood is rushing to the clitoris, it's aroused. It feels great, win-win. So um, I would say that this is probably the most common thing, mm. a clip pump. So kind of does what it says in the don't know. It looks like a bit like an oxygen mask, to be honest. So you'd get a little bit of water-based lube, put it around the tip. You stick it on the clip. Use lube. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How are you not in pain? Yes. <laughs> right, disclaimer, use lube, <laughs> use lube. So um, yeah, <laughs> stick some water brace lube around the tip, stick it on your clit and literally pump, yeah, pump, pump. Suck, so suck, yeah. if I, I'm just trying to think where I can stick I it. I don't, I don't feel All right. No, no, you do, stick it on your arm. So start pumping. I'm gonna pump the shit out. Right, so as you can see, it's not going anywhere. imagine that is my clit. It would be massively enlarged. Now you do have a quick release button though, if you just press that. Ta-da, it comes off, so don't worry, it's not going to be stuck to your clit forever. Um, but yes, please use lube next time. I think that's probably why the swelling doesn't go down. <laughs> Rookie error. Um, oh, wow, so, a pussy pump, normally quite cheap. You can get one for about 13 quid if you just want the bog standard one. If you want to be bougie like this bitch, you get a cheeky vibrating one. It's probably going to cost you about 20 quid. Um, this one, I was a cheapskate, I'm not going to lie, I bought this from eBay. And it's because, yeah, I was just being a tight ass around payday. But normally I would buy these sort of things from your Love Honeys, your Bandaras, and Summers. This is also great if you are, um, and I've experienced this before, I absolutely fucking love my vibrator, probably a little bit too much. And eventually if you use your vibrator too much, especially if it's a very powerful one, your clit will become desensitized, like it just... Yeah. You can't feel anything. So this is almost like therapy for you to continue that blood flow going to your clit, training your clit to basically love itself again. So that's the pussy pump. This, if you can't be asked with this, clit clamp. So literally, imagine that's my clit. Slide it on and it literally clamps your clit into place. Now clamp is a bit of a strong word. It's a little bit like a very light clothes peg. But what if you have a smaller clit than that? Slide it further. Not, not not, like there, you can literally slide out like as if you're putting slide your hairpin in. Uh -huh. I often love using this alongside a vibrator. It's really, really great because it just intensifies those mm. vibrations. I know you've got one of these. Mm. Would you ever buy a clip lamp? I don't know, they look quite scary, but the thing is I feel like that would give more pleasure than that. But this has little gems why. on it. I know, it looks, it looks beautiful. <laughs> I mean, how cute but is this? I feel this? like this is nice because if you're with a partner, they have more control. Exactly, so I'd say for like partner play, this is definitely like a partner yeah, play. This is definitely okay. so this, is, this is definitely a partner play toy because obviously you control it and stuff like this. You obviously get stuff like, like penis pumps, which are very different to this. But again, you can control that level of arousal. This, you'd probably want to put on yourself. Yeah, exactly. Can do a partner exactly. play, but these are for the advance. Mm -hmm. um, so this, a click clamp. I believe I bought this on, let me think, uh, Love Honey, I think it was. And this was for 6 dollars They kind of stay around this price, to be honest, because, you know, it's a very manual toy. You don't need batteries or any of that. So... Clit clamp. Value for money. Five. Quietness. Four. Ease of use. Four. Durability. Five. Practicality. Four. Available to purchase at Bondara, Love Honey, and Summers, and most other sex toy manufacturers. Pussy pump.
Value for money. Five. Quietness. Four. Ease of use. Four. Durability. Five. Practicality. Four. Available to purchase at Bondara, Love Honey, Ann Summers, and most other sex toy manufacturers. Hello and welcome back to Mavro Talks Love, Sex and Relationships. Today we are speaking about abortion. We have got a pre-submitted social media question, but before we get onto that, we'll go around. We have... King George. Stefano. Kira. E. Paris. Sophia. Um, so the pre-submitted question from social media, and I'll leave it for the floor to discuss. Would you tell your one night stand if you were going to get an abortion? I would like my one night stand to tell me that. Right, okay, okay. It depends, like, is it a one night stand, like, I've hooked up with my mate accidentally, or is it a random guy I don't even got, isn't it? I mean, I would yeah. do that. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's say, for example, you matched on Tinder, you went for a first day in a bar, you happened to have sex on that first date, and you got pregnant would oh, you then yeah. message bit, that tinder match that's back a bit, yeah. i personally wouldn't that's a bit of a like, sticky one it depends on the date i went, don't really know. it's my body my choice so regardless what he, i doubt that a, a, a one night stand's gonna be like oh no please don't um probably get a thumbs up emoji back like <laughs> i feel like there's part of me that would want to tell somebody because i feel like i think you should only tell um, someone if you're like indecisive about keeping about keeping the baby or not yeah. or if you need support like I think that's the thing as well if you need support if you feel like that person in some way could support you and uh, Stefano you said that you would appreciate if someone told you why why would you want someone to tell you if it was a one night stand well now that the, the all the scenarios have come out I've kind of changed my mind because I guess if it was yeah I met you that night we went home we did the thing then I'd rather <laughs> you just not tell me because I will never know Mm-hmm. And it depends. If you feel like you're gonna have a trauma about it, then I feel like you should at least contact me so I can support you through that. If you don't if, have if that you're, emotional if you're, yeah. bond, you're better off getting that support just get from it your done, family yeah. and, and friends, aren't tell you? Because you never know. Because a guy, you might, even if it's a one night stand, he might turn around and say, "No, I." You don't know his life, so he might have been wanting a kid for the longest. So, Harris, two. I'm Alex. Samuel. Elise. Bradley. So today's question is: Would you tell your one night stand if you were gonna get an abortion? Or, as the man, would you like your one-night stand to inform you that they are going through with that process? Yes. I don't know. I think I think they deserve to know. They were part of the process. They deserve to know how Mm -hmm. the process goes. T? I would tell them, but I wouldn't expect them to care. Like, I wouldn't expect them to... What if they really did care, though? Yeah, that's what I would tell them, just in case. Sam? Would you want to know? Yeah. I'm I'm trying to get my head around getting a one night stand pregnant. I'm getting my head around that. <laughs> oh, you're where I am. Thank I'm you. I'm getting my head around that. I don't really. Okay, so let me, let me let me but, switch the narrative slightly. Me, Not like one focus. night stand, like you're never gonna see him. Like you on the first date. Then then of course I won't know. Of course you, I won't know. You would or you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know. Hundred percent. Yeah, but what if it was that one night? So you went to a club, you picked the girl up, you went home. That was if it. If you still and got it was my a number, one night stand. let man know. Yeah, I would want to know. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll be nice. It was even even if <laughs> I mean if it's a random person, you know, they they're free to do what they do, but it will be nice. Even if they've made the decision, I still feel like that's ours, bruv. Do you get what I mean? Like yeah. it's I don't want to know to try and convince well, you differently. If, but that. if they don't but know you, but that. if they don't really know you, I'm playing devil's advocate here because yeah. I, I can't I'm struggling, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't know you and they plan on aborting it. I can get the disconnect because there was already a disconnect. I get it. With someone I, that I you don't two, know. I, I have it. like two different things. Like I don't do one night stands. I've never had mm-hmm. one. But if I had, I don't think I'd tell them because I think I'm not going to probably keep it. It's not worth the stress. However, if I've got an emotional connection with you, I think that's bang out of order if mm-hmm. I don't say anything. I just think if oh, we've got to the point of fucking each other, that's enough of a rapport. Mm-hmm. I've been inside you. It's, do you know what I mean? That's enough of a rapport. To, to, bro, drop man a text, bro. Cool, man. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, that's we didn't just hold hands and like, right, you know what I mean, <laughs> have a good day. Like, could, we spent time. I could see why women wouldn't. Uh, no, so do I. Yeah, so they do don't I. want to deal with the stress of the man's opinion or the mm. man's thoughts or the man yeah. trying to get her to change her mind because it depends I'm, on what. See, a lot I'm, of the time, I'm, I'm men are. Right it shouldn't be a stress. I don't. I don't. I don't like the fact that I don't want to have to deal with the stress. Yeah, or, yeah. Like, I get it. It's your choice. Cool, cool, cool. But it's our. I. I'm it could be from... stressful though. No, no, no. I, I get it, but it's like 
We're both in it though. But if still. you don't have a say, yeah, it's yeah. actually redundant. And this is the thing. No, 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 you, technically. No, 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 technically, yeah. No, technic- no, technically, if a woman decides she's going to abort, yeah, it's done. you, you don't, don't have a say. But you, yeah, but you still opinion. have the chance to encourage them not to. Oh. If it's a one night stand, I don't even know you like that to even yeah. try and encourage you because that means we're having like. If you've already made the decision, and this is why I'm in, I'm in such a mind state, tra- because personally, I, I'm a person I would want to know, regardless, mm. we've done a thing, I want to know, oh, right, you're pregnant, you're, yeah. okay, cool. But at the same time, it is very much of the, well, what's the point? You're yeah. doing it anyway, don't tell me. Yeah, yeah, but, it's out, it's not out every, but not yes. every man will have that view. Yeah, what, what Some think... men will try and change your yeah, mind yeah, yeah. because either religious views or whatever, or they mm. want to just have that little bit of... I, I also don't feel like it's, the end of the world if he tries to have a conversation with you in a respectful way because a lot of the times in such yeah, heightened what, emotion situations you sort that there's things that you just haven't thought about but, but you're saying from a respect yeah yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying yeah. always yeah. from a respectful place so we have law of averages let's look at the law of averages of men let's look at the law I'm unbiased right no, now let's look at the law of averages of respectful men yeah unfortunately well. what I'm talking about is I know <laughs> this isn't the law of averages we're defeating the law of averages that's what would make it stressful because you're nice guys however however on the one night stand would you know that that person's going to give you stress because I'm assuming you don't know well enough to know that oh, I don't want to deal with it because you might be a bare respectful person <laughs> say that again if they're out here having one night stands like that you can <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying if you were in that Bit situation of a bad one. <laughs> the chances are if a man has a one night stand and gets a girl pregnant chances are he doesn't he want, want to know yeah. Yeah. chances are he yeah, don't want it doesn't mean he want it was that as a guilt trip or it was that as some sort of way to make the girl feel bad for having an abortion yeah, it's a oh, I would feel I like they'd rust. more be like, why are you telling me? I don't care. Yeah. Just That's what I would feel like. Well, well, I think, do you know what it comes down to for me? Are you pro-life or pro-choice? Because a guy could be pro-life and he's just like, regardless of whatever happened, mm. we didn't yeah. think mm-hmm. I want to have yeah. a child. And he I, may not even want to be yeah. in like, the li- yeah. child's life and all that, but or he, he feels morally... Because some people feel morally, you need to keep the child. Like, I, I don't need to be there, but yeah. you have to have it. Because yeah, yeah. God said, you've got to have yeah. it. But God didn't say, I have to be there. Yeah, yeah. God yeah. said, you have to have it. It's the rules. I didn't make them. That's, That's why it. I feel like you should tell them, though. So Because you never know. They might actually want it. If you're yeah. worried about the stress, yeah, the moment he gives you stress, hang up the phone. Do you know what I mean? But I feel like it's... Just have to... Uh, Personally. Women ain't robots, they're yeah, emotional. Yeah, I, mean. and I think I think it's the men's choice as well. Even though like legally it's not and we get to it pick. I think yeah. that it's 50-50 yeah. and I think that's how it should be. It's not 50-50. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, like it's not 50, 50, 50, 90 10. <laughs> you hear me out. Yeah. Um <laughs> on that note, if you guys want to get involved in a conversation, please do drop us a comment. Um and also follow us on all social media platforms at Mavro Talks. Love, bro.